Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and welcome to the Flax Game Engine. What you see in front of you, this is Flax Engine, and the reason why we are talking about Flax Engine today specifically is this. So Flax 1.7 was just released. Now, a quick overview of Flax itself. I'm just going to fly around this scene. This scene is a uh, file I imported from a demo recently uh, from the uh, Open World's Unreal Engine asset. So obviously, you can get it working in other engines such as Flax. I'll have the link down below. But what impresses me about Flax is it just brings in these complex GLB or FBX or whatever files without any problem whatsoever. So here's an example. Let's go over here. Let's grab another one I used in that demo. This is a Tommy gun. So I'm just going to basically go over here, grab Tommy, drop it in. Then what we do is we tell it, okay, what are we going to do with it? So this is a model as opposed to a skin model or an animated model. It's a model. Now what you're going to find is it comes in very small. So I'll do a hundred times scaling on it. And other than that, we just go ahead and import it. It pulls in all of the textures, puts them in its own folder. And in just a second, we are going to have a model. Our model is ready. Drop it into the game world like so, and boom, you have yourself a Tommy gun. That is one of the things I love about this particular um, game engine is, frankly, it just works. There's also a ton of configurability for the graphics rendering, the capabilities, and so on. On top of that, we have... Um, uh, full scripting support for visual scripting, C sharp scripting, and get this one C live scripting. You can actually do it updates on the fly. Um, it uses kind of a Unity adjacent approach. It's a little bit different, but you can see here you've got you attach scripts to objects, various different components can be added to objects. All of your various different components are available up here. You have tools in here that you don't often see, things like full landscape or train editing tools, foliage placement tools. Uh, there's a heck of a lot in there. This new release adds uh, cloth functionality. You have full physics integration in this guy. This is available. The tooling is primarily on Windows, but there are builds for Linux and then Mac OS. And the Mac OS version just got some love as well. So Linux, Mac, and Windows are your development environments. It can actually even run on consoles. Uh, it is an a source available engine. Uh, it is commercial. It's got a 4% royalty attached to it uh, after you make $250,000 per quarter. So you can basically, if you spread out your money across the year, you can make a million bucks before you have to pay Flax a single thing. This is probably one of my favorite underdog game engines. I absolutely love Flax. So what we're going to do uh, is jump over onto the website of things, and then we're going to go through some of the details in Flax 1.7, because quite frankly, the biggest new improvement with Flax 1.7 is actually a change to the EULA. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about how to use Flax beyond what we already showed because quite frankly I've already covered that. So if you do want to grab Flax, it's available at flaxengine.com. Uh, you can see the website available right here. Again, available for a number of different platforms. Your feature set is all listed here. Again, some of the cooler things here is C Sharp and C++ and visual scripting as well. It's got decent performance. You've got real-time global illuminations, a couple different options there. A number of VFX tools are in there, full animation tools, full uh, support for a variety of different platforms in there. Again, hot reloading of C Sharp and C++ in the editor is quite cool. Uh, it is a small or svelte engine, you're going to find that it's pretty impressive how small this guy actually is. You can build it from source in just a few minutes. And of course, you can build it from source. That's another nice thing about this when you compare it to, say, Unity, is the source is available to everybody. I'm not going to go into a ton of details because, again, I did this uh, rundown already, the Flax engine for Unity game developers, where I kind of looked at Flax from the perspective of a Unity developer, but we cover a lot in this video. It's a simple overview of the engine, how to import assets in, how to set up texture a model, as you'll see right there, we got the textures in there, how to set up a behavior tree so that you can animate a model, then we show the visual scripting for how to actually uh, control a character using visual script, and then we even get into how to do the same thing using C Sharp. So if you want to get an introduction to developing using Flax. I highly recommend checking this one out. I will link this down below. I'll also link to that Humble Bundle if you want to check out some assets for Flax. But Flax 1.7 itself. So what is new in this particular release? Again, I kind of talked about it earlier on. The big new thing is the improvements to the licensing. Now, in the vision, the uh, engine uh, to the Unreal Engine to Flax uh, article I did earlier on, truth of the matter is, if you are using Flax, you are just as susceptible to the, we'll call it chicanery, the trickery that uh, a unit 
community just did, where they just retroactively changed their terms of service. So what good are an EOLA for us if they can just change it? Well, they've done some things here uh, to clarify the EOLA to make it so that you can only change it so many times, uh, and also to make it, and the most important part, is a perpetual EULA. So they changed here. Uh, they can only make uh, a maximum of one license modification per calendar quarter. So if they want to update the license, they can only do it once every uh, three months. They remove the ability to revoke or terminate the license. So once you have agreed to the license, you have that license uh, terms forever. And that's going to come in important with one of the other clarifications, which is this one right there. So if they do some screwery and they create a new uh, addition to the license, let's say they randomly added, I don't know, a 4% runtime fee on everything ever created using the Flax game engine as you know a random example. Uh, you could just say, nope, I'm going to stay with the version I got and you can screw off. And that is basically what this is going to say. This is what we call a perpetual EU. ULA, and these terms working together make it so that the Flax licensing is not a problem. So this will keep them from being able to do what Unity just did. And to a degree, it'll protect you going forward because they can only change it, make one change per uh, quarter. So maximum one license modification per calendar quarter. So they can't make massive changes. They've only made, uh, so they see three years. They've only updated it twice and both were in favor of the user. But this change means they can't make and force a bad change down your throat. Makes Flax much more useful in that regard. Now, uh, in terms of royalty, I mentioned it earlier on. They have a, a 4% of gross revenue above $250,000 per calendar quarter. So if you make a million dollars a year, but you actually made that as like quarter, 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 and quarter, you pay them literally uh, nothing from that result. They've also changed it up a little bit, so how this works. So if you get paid a huge lump sum up front, so let's say you paid a uh, million dollars in advance payment, you would have to pay Flax $30,000, so 4% of the value above the $250,000 in the quarter. However, later on, if you made more money, that... Uh, amount that you made up front will be recouped and taken out. So it, it works out uh, better in terms of licensing terms. That is the update that they have done. Now back to the actual um, technology or, or things about this particular release. What are the new features, the shinies, the new baubles to play with? Well, first off, we have new clothing simulator. This is uh, powered by Envy Cloth. I will admit, though, uh, for me, uh, it crashed the second I used it. So your mileage may vary, uh, but there is now a cloth simulator in um, this particular release, which is quite nice. Uh, then we've also got uh, cloth painting tools and per vertex paintbrush there. I'd love to demonstrate that to you, but as I said, it crashes for me, so that's unfortunate. Uh, we've got some improvements to... Um, the behavior trees, again, that other tutorial shows you how behavioral trees actually work. But for gameplay programming, uh, so popular AI technique used in many computer games to design and simulate intelligent characters, agents, or objects. Behavior tree is a combination of many different things. AI techniques, hierarchical state machines, planning, scheduling, and execution. Ex action, execution. Key advantage of behavior trees is that they are quite easy to understand and can be created with visual editing tools rather than code only. They're designed to be very extendable by both game and plugin. You can create custom node types and wrap any data type and behavioral knowledge via Blackboard or Goal. Finally, editor contains behavior trees editors with live debugging utilities in there. So they definitely updated the behavior trees. You can again see an example of a behavior tree using to do animation controls uh, in that linked video down below. Uh, so we got performance improvements as well. So on large scale projects, so scenes with 40,000 plus objects, uh, polishing our custom .NET binding code that links the C Sharp to C++ runtimes together. So we got performance improvements there. Physics simulations with thousands of active bodies are more stable with the new physics collision events. Um, so they started to refactor scene loading to run as uh, much as possible in asynchronous via the job system. Uh, now 1.7 actors and scripts are created via the job system, uh, pictured above, with results in large performance benefits in large worlds or levels using many prefabs. In 1.8, they plan to continue this and improve async scene object deserialization via the job system. We got some improvements to the editor. There is a new plugin project creation tool in the editor, so you can create plugins directly from the editor. Uh, plugin adding via git clone, uh, content browser improvements, new look, more features for sorting and item display, a new spline editing tool, a network profile with object replication and RPC stats, missing script utility to quickly re-add missing scripts in the editor, such as if you renamed one. Uh, automatic game settings apply when saving JSON file in the editor. Uh, so improvements to the editor for Mac OS. So Mac OS is actually a relatively recent addition, so we've got some improvements there. Uh, so in order to smooth usability on that platform, they fixed many bugs related to the .NET SDK detection, input dockable window usage, and much more. Starting from now on, they will provide Code signed Flax editor for Mac OS ARM 64, which is very nice. So instead of having to get it from the build system or build it yourself, there are now going to be signed versions of the binary 
So it makes it a lot easier to work with, and you don't need to turn off the, some of the Apple security settings to get things working. Added a file washer support to handle hot reloading of scripts and shaders. Graphics backend will probably handle Molten VK runtime with the latest Vulkan SDK. Molten VK is a, a Vulkan to metal uh, transition layer. Uh, and the onboarding experience improves, so improvements to the .NET, um, .NET SDK installation detection in the editor, improvements to Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, and Rider Code Editor integration, fixed stability of the launcher downloading daily master builds from GitHub, release of the official editor for the macOS package, and lots of bug fixes. So one of the, the faults about this is it's basically a single developer leading this project. There are some community contributions, etc., but it is just amazing how much they managed to jam pack into these particular releases. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is Flax Engine. If you're interested in checking it out, again, it is one of my favorites. I am definitely going to get around to doing a more in-depth tutorial series with it at some point. It kind of reminds me of when Godot was young, uh, and I was just so excited about Godot. Godot was much more mature. I'm still excited about Godot, but Flax is that scrappy little underdog, and it's not a full open source engine. It's very similar in licensing to what Unreal Engine is all about, but I I just like it. It's just a fun little engine. There's some faults with it for sure. And I'd have to dig in deeper to start experiencing those faults. But this is an engine I recommend, highly recommend you check out. Check out that uh, Flax for Unity developers video for getting an idea of what the workflow is like and see if it is a good engine for you. Flax 1.7 is now available. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.